Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little flip through of this adorable little A6 Traveler's Notebook that I've been playing around with for the last couple of weeks. And basically what I've done is I have created a Traveler's Notebook by just hole punching, which I'm not sure Okay, to start off with, don't even ask me why I punched these so close together. <laughs> they should really be like out here. But anyways, I punched holes in this Moterm notebook cover. It's an A6 notebook cover using this hole punch that I've had probably for, gosh, 15 years. It's got these little attachments and you just stick it on what you're trying to punch and you hammer it down and I just keep it in its original box and I've got it like stapled together. But this is what I used to punch holes in the leather. And the the cool thing about it is this has this back pocket so you can't see the holes in the outside of the cover. The reason that I did this is mainly because these notebooks are A6, not passport size, which is what the standard traveler's notebook size is. So let me grab. This is a regular sized passport traveler's notebook that I got from Sterling Inc. And as you can see, it's much smaller than the A6. So I just decided I already had this. I figured, you know what? I had these notebooks. I had the cover, so I figured let's just play around and see what I can create. I was bored one day and said, let's just do this. <laughs> I wanted to get creative and just wanted to be crafty. So I created this traveler's notebook out of stuff that I already owned. So, all right, let's just get started. <laughs> so what I have in the pockets here is not much. These to me are decorative. I don't put anything in them. What I have in this little pocket is little grocery lists that I've created on my computer, and I just fold them in half and stick them there. <laughs> so, all right, let's get started with basically what I'm using. The I have four notebooks. Oh, so in the back pockets, I have stickers and these are what I use as my like pencil boards or blotting paper that I just created out of um, watercolor paper. I just stamped an image on there and then I stick them in the back and just leave them back there for when I need them. All right, so the notebooks that I'm using are from Good Ink Pressions. I don't know if you can see, but there's the logo for the branding for the company right there. And I don't mind it. It doesn't bother me. It's, I think it's actually really pretty. I thought about decorating the fronts of these, but I decided against it just because I feel like if I like to stick with this throughout the whole year, then I don't want to put something on the cover that I might get tired of. <laughs> so none of them are decorated as far as the covers are concerned, but I have four inserts here and I chose to go with the, let's see if you can see, it is the four millimeter square grid. And I asked them, so this is a custom that I actually learned about from Lindsay Scribbles. You can ask them to square off the corners and do a four millimeter grid instead of, I believe their standard is five. And I write really small, so I prefer the four millimeter grid. And I chose to go with the cream colored paper. I don't know if you guys have watched any of my other videos or anything like that, but I actually prefer the creamier color paper over the bright white sort of like bluish colored paper. It's just softer on the eyes and I actually prefer it. So I chose to ask them for the cream colored paper with the four millimeter square grid and the squared off edges or corners, uh, squared off corners. <laughs> just because I thought that it looked really pretty. And I got the bigger, I believe it's 120 page notebooks. They have different page amounts for whatever. I will say that while I love these inserts, I think that they are really, really, really nice. They take 
a long time to get here if you're in the United States. I believe it took a month for them to arrive from the day I placed my order to the day they arrived on my doorstep. It took about a month. So just keep that in mind. It's definitely worth the wait, in my opinion. I love this paper. I love these little notebooks. They're so stinking cute. And I've had a lot of fun playing around in them. Okay, so specs out of the way. <laughs> Let's just go with a little flip. Um, there's not a whole lot in here because like I said, I've only been playing around for a few weeks, but I have one notebook that is my yearly notebook that's going to have like all of my year set up and notes and stuff like that that I want to keep with my notebook for the entire year. And then I have a bullet journal one that honestly will probably only hold one or two months if I keep using it the way that I have intended using it. And then I have my reading journal in here, which might seem kind of small to some of you, but I have really, really loved this. And for, if for some reason this system, I decide against it, I will probably still use this as my reading journal because I have loved it. My next video will hopefully be a reading journal catch up so you guys can see me actually like playing around in here. So I may not do a flip of this little book in this video. I will probably do it in my next one. And then this is basically just an extra insert that I had. And I just thought, you know what, let's just put it in here. I haven't done anything in it. It's completely blank, but I thought maybe I could do some creative journaling in here, long form journaling, just art journaling, doodling. It's just in here just for whatever I want for it to be. So let's flip through. Oh, and I have these little tabs are just tabs that I have cut in half and just taped on the back because I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep each insert what it is and all that stuff. So I just really liked it. I thought it was cute. So I just did it. <laughs> and I hand wrote that. So this is my cover page for my yearly setup, and I have loved making these little collages in here. That's the one thing that I liked so much about these when I first started, and kind of what made me so obsessed is that these little collages literally take minutes. They're so tiny and so adorable. I just love them. I've actually considered switching, if I really like this setup, maybe... Um, next year going to the passport size because these little collages have been so fun to make that I thought it, they'd probably be even more fun in a smaller <laughs> notebook. So what I have here is just my future log. I have decorated with some Serica Studio stickers and very simple handwriting, nothing major. I did a future log for the whole year, and then I have my meal planning, which is just literally just a list of some of our favorite meals that I like to rotate. And I just did a little collage just to make it fun because I can. <laughs> and then I have a YouTube content page that's just basically a blank page that I just decorated so that I have it here. And then for my yearly, that's pretty much it. I have some ideas for other spreads that I want to create, but I haven't done them yet. So um, I do always like to have a pen swatch or a marker swatch page in the back of all of my journals. I know it seems kind of silly, but every paper is different with every marker. So I like to have all of my favorite colors. These are not all the markers I have, obviously, but they're my favorite colors to use right now. So I have them all swatched. And I have Tombow, my favorite Castell. These are Calliograph from Archer and Olive, which I love. The dual ended. Oh my goodness, I love them. And then the Crayola Colors of the World markers. And then I have, these are some of the newer ones I've gotten. That's why a lot of the brighter colors are in here. These are the Pentel Sign Touch Pens, which I absolutely love. And then I have the Rytec Brush Pens. And then these are some of my favorite inks to use. 
A lot of ink pads don't work with this Tomoe River paper. They bleed through really bad. So I have discovered the Versa Magic Chalk Ink, which works really beautifully. They have some really pretty colors. And as you can see, they definitely, so this is the black. This is the darkest one and it's the black. And it does ghost. You can see through the paper, but it does not bleed through. So a lot of my favorite ink pads that I have that I used in like, for example, my Archer and Oliver notebook therapy, the Ranger archival ink bleeds through this paper. So I discovered the chalk ink and I mean, it works beautifully. I absolutely love it. So that is my yearly little book. Moving on to the bullet journal one. So I've just kind of been playing around in this. So really, it just started this month. <laughs> I've just been setting it up slowly and just having so much fun creating collages and all of that. And I've really been focusing on the reading journal part. So I've got March set up in here, and this is the cover page. And <laughs> this page here is not my favorite. <laughs> It's my favorite in my bullet journal because it's my currently page. It's got what I'm reading and watching and listening to and all of that, but it's so different. I accidentally skipped this page and moved on to this page, and so this was created on a completely different day in a completely different mood, and <laughs> I wish I had done something different, but, you know, it's got butterflies on it, so it's beautiful. <laughs> So this is my March cover page. And again, the little collages are just so much fun to make. They're so quick and easy. And then we have the calendar spread, simple, fun, just adorable little stickers. Get to play around with some of the smaller stickers that I have. It's a little challenging because this is a really small notebook, but I actually had a lot of fun. And then my habit and mood tracker my gratitude spread which you can see we've already <laughs> we're already into march and then bills i haven't filled this out yet but i need to do it because you know bills but I, you know for the sake of filming this video i left my bills out and this is my cleaning spread and how perfect is this sticker i got this from pinky elephant it is on a pet tape that has a lot of like self-care, cleaning, that kind of stuff. I can't remember the name of the artist, but I will try to put their name on the screen. But this is my cleaning spread. And like I said in my last video, I'm trying something a little bit different than what I normally do. So I wanted to do this collage on this page just to give me something pretty to look at <laughs> instead of, you know, chores. And then I have a notes page that I always set up, which is just for randomness. I just like to set something up that's already decorated and already used so that I'm not like, oh, I don't want to use a blank page to write something teeny tiny down. So I like to have a dedicated notes page. And then I have a little content spread that I'm still kind of playing around with the layout of it. But so far, I've really liked having, you know, all of my Instagram and YouTube videos that I want to do for the month. And then this is my weekly setup for this week. This idea I got from Plan to Create. She has these Habsies in her Etsy shop. And when I was using the disc bound notebook, that's what I purchased from her was her Habsies. And I have never turned back. <laughs> Sometimes every now and then I will decide, oh, you know what? I can try a different weekly layout, but no. This is the one that always works for me. It's got a place for a to-do list. It's got a place for listing and sectioning out, and I will change the sections every week or so or month or so and just kind of change things up. But for the most part, this is what my weekly setup looks like, and I absolutely love it. And so far, that is all I have for my bullet journal insert. I'm not sure if I'm going to do dailies in here because I, there's not very much space and I don't want to do an insert a month, but I kind of, I, I kind of want dailies with, I don't know. <laughs> 
I don't know. If you can be in my brain right now, you would understand. <laughs> I really want like journaling and everything. I want all of I want all of March together. If that makes sense. I want the whole month of March to be in one place, but I would like for it to not take up as much space as it's probably going to take up. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's the, what I'm struggling with the most with this little system is I don't want to have to, I don't want to have to buy a book, a little insert for every single month, if that makes sense. Cause that just seems, I don't know. That seems silly. It seems like a waste. So I don't know. But anyways, moving on, this is my reading journal and I will – look how pretty. She's so cute. <laughs> so I've really liked having the small space. If you have watched any of my other reading journal videos, you know that I don't really write a whole lot about each book that I read. So I've actually been toying around with going with like a traveler's notebook size or a B6 size or something smaller than an A5 because I just I have very small handwriting and then I don't write a whole lot for each book. So it's kind of I don't know, it feels like a wasted space when I just decorate an entire A5 spread and then write like this much. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I I really love this size. So if I don't stick with the bullet journaling side of this setup, I will probably most definitely stick with the reading journal side because it's been so much fun making these tiny little spreads. They're just so much fun. <laughs> And then, like I said, I have the blank one here that I'm not really doing anything with. And yeah, that's my that's my little setup. I thought you guys might be interested in seeing what I've been up to besides my normal B6 notebook. This is my normal bullet journal. So you can see the size difference here. It's it's pretty dramatic, to be honest. Um, but I've, I don't know, I've had a lot of fun. So I did want to kind of go over some of the reasons why I like this and some of the reasons why I'm, I, I might be changing my mind or, you know, some of my concerns about the system. So the one thing that I love really is the size. I, I just, I'm kind of obsessed with this tiny little A6 size. It's just so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many times I can say that, but it's just so much fun. This little tiny size trying to figure out how to get little collages everywhere. Like they're just so fun. It is definitely easy to be creative in here because like I said, the the space is so much smaller. You don't have to use as much. You don't have as much space to fill up. If you like to fill up the whole page, it's very easy. Or if you like little, like if you like minimal, it still feels like you're not wasting space, if that makes sense. If you like the more minimal layouts, like my my habit and mood tracker doesn't have anything on it. There's no decoration on it, but it still feels full, if that makes sense, because it's such a small little notebook that it doesn't take much to fill it up. I also do really like the different sections. I know that might seem weird because I just said I don't want to spend all the money on it. A monthly insert, but I do like that it has a yearly that I can keep in here for an entire year. And then it has a monthly that I know this is where everything for the whole month goes. And then my reading journal is actually in my planner, which I love that because I can just take this everywhere with me and then I can just have it right there sitting next to me <laughs> at all times. I just, I love that it's got all the different sections. So that's been, that's really what sold me on this to begin with. I'm still trying to figure out the whole monthly situation. So if you guys have any tips for me, if you're not a travel traveler's notebook newbie like I am, let me know your thoughts on that in the comments down below. Um, another thing that I really love about this is the color of the paper. I, again, I just, I love the cream colored paper. It, it just, it 
It speaks to my soul. <laughs> also, the paper is a little bit thicker. It is Tamoy River paper, but it's a little bit thicker than the Sterling ink paper. This is the Sterling ink paper. And as you can see, it's definitely more of a white color. It's still not that blue white color, but it's, you can see that it is a little bit different. This is the cream colored paper and this is the white. And it is very thin, like very, very thin which I still love this paper. Don't get me wrong. I love it. But for collaging purposes, it's nice because this paper is just a little bit thicker and it makes it a little bit easier to handle some of these thicker pieces of ephemera. So I, I, love, I love the thicker paper in here. And I think my favorite thing, which I've already mentioned, is the reading journal. Like this is my favorite part of this whole thing is the fact that I have my reading journal in here and it's so little bitty. <laughs> Okay, so some of the things that I don't love about this whole system, sometimes it feels a little too small because, like I said, I don't want to have to use a whole insert for just one month. I want to be able to get multiple months in here, but I also want to add in my dailies, which is where I do like just light journaling, nothing major, but I'd like to be able to put in dailies in here. And I don't think that I would be able to get more than one month. I might be able like there might be a little bit of pages left, but not enough to do a whole second month. So sometimes this just feels like it might be a little bit too small. Also, I don't know how, um, I know that Traveler's Company makes a, um, like a binder that you can archive all of this stuff in, but these are A6 size. So I don't know how I would archive this whole thing when the year is over. I don't know if I would just, you know, close it up and set this on my shelf altogether. It feels like I'd be wasting this cover, but I don't know what people do with, do they just like put them in a box? Like, <laughs> how do you archive this? Because I'm not throwing this away. These are so cute. I'm not throwing it away. I don't get rid of any of my journals. So I feel like right now, I love the idea of the different sections, but at the end of the year, I'll have all these notebooks, especially if I only get one per insert, one month per insert. I'll have a whole stack of notebooks. Do I just get like a box to put them all in? That's one of my bigger concerns about this whole setup. Another thing that I don't love is, especially if I'm going to use this for like daily journaling and stuff, the writing experience in here is not the greatest. I don't love it. And taking these inserts in and out is also not fun. <laughs> Trying to get them in and out of these little elastic pieces and everything, I don't love that. Um, so I don't know. It's just bulky. Like you have to put something under your hand to write on the paper in here and I don't know. It's just kind of inconvenient. I don't love it. So that's one of the, that's another one of the bigger concerns that I have for this whole system. And also these inserts are a little bit pricey. Um, I, I don't remember exactly how much they cost. I will try to leave a link in the description box, but they are pricier than what I expected. <laughs> Maybe I just don't know Traveler's Notebook inserts. Maybe I just don't know how much they cost, but they're pricier than what I was expecting. So having to buy an insert a month, um, yeah, that seems, I just don't think I'm going to want to do that. <laughs> and also, like I said, they take a long time to arrive. So those are my thoughts on the little traveler's notebook setup that I have here. If you have any questions for me, let me know. That's my little flip through. I have had a lot of fun with this and yeah, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye.